Emily Dickinson's three stanza poem, The Soul Selects Her Own Society, deviates from her typical ballad meter in an unusual way. While in typical ballad meter, the odd numbered lines have eight syllables and the even numbered lines have six, in this poem, the odd numbered lines have nine or 10 syllables, while the shortened even number lines have, in the first two stanzas, only four syllables. And in the final stanza, only two each. Now in the poem, the speaker describes the way one, the soul, chooses particular friends or companions. It chooses those with whom she will associate and then shuts everyone else out. It doesn't matter how grand or important any subsequent visitor might be. The unmoved speaker has known the soul to choose just one companion and then firmly close off her attention to others. This is the entire poem. The soul selects her own society, then shuts the door to her divine majority, present no more. Unmoved, she notes the chariots, pausing at her low gate, unmoved, an emperor be kneeling upon her mat. I've known her from an ample nation, choose one, then close the valves of her attention, like stone. This poem creates a picture of a soul or an individual who chooses a companion and then coldly shuts all others out. Acting without regret or compunction, she shuts the door, closes the valves of her attention, and is unmoved by those who present themselves to her. The feeling of decisive renunciation is accentuated by the feeling of abruptness created by the disparity in length between the odd-numbered lines and the even-numbered ones. The attitude in this poem reflects facts of Dickinson's life. She was not at all a public person and wasn't known to socialize beyond a small, carefully selected circle. In later life, she became something of a recluse, known to local people as the myth, according to Mabel Loomis Todd, who later edited her poetry. This poem seems to assert the soul must attend to itself, and no lover, friend, or ambition deserves dominion over it.